Praise the Lord. Thanks, Pastor. Well, I don't want to <clears throat> tell my my personal testimony would take a long <clears throat> a long time, but uh, I was saved uh, at not at a young age. It's, I, I always love love to see children children get saved. Children are a blessing. Uh, I was saved at an older time in life. I was 36 years old. I was wandering um, far from sin, far from, far from far from God in sin, and I didn't know. I knew all about Jesus in my head. I, I was born in a religion that talked about Jesus, but I, would, I didn't know who he was personally. I, didn't, I, I, never, I thought he was some ascended master for quite a while. And so I didn't know the Lord Jesus Christ through the Bible because I didn't believe the Bible. The day I believed the Bible was the day I got saved. Because I was raised where the Bible wasn't the only authority. It was like something out there you just looked at. But <clears throat> the day I believed the Bible was the day I got saved. And I got saved out of the New Age. Greenpeace, Citizens for a Better Environment. Um, uh, I mean, a lot of political activist causes I want to talk about. I'm ashamed of those. And uh, I used to be far, far, far off and politically. And then I, I, f I found the Lord changed my, my attitude about what is right and what is wrong. I used to think you could do anything you want, but now I know you can only do, you know, you should do what God says to do and not what you want to do. And uh, anyway, so to make a long story short, the Lord is gracious, uh, and the a nurse that saw me after I got saved says, "What are you doing here in church?" I said, "I got saved." She says, "You were the last person in the world I thought would get saved." So if, if you think somebody's far from getting saved, maybe they they can come to the Lord. Just be, pray, be pay, pray for them. Be patient. People prayed for me. People, you know, I got witness to scores of times. People told me about Jesus over and over again, and I. Said no, 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 no. Well, one day it came real to me, God to change my heart, and um, I'm thankful for my wife Maria, and uh, going with her. My lifestyle evangelism happens that she's sometimes doing something. We went to the police station in Italy, where it's already uh, 2018, and we were at the police station. We met some Africans who were getting their paper. She was getting her paperwork renewed, her paperwork, and I met these guys. And I started giving the gospel, and I said, would you like to hear the gospel? He says, we need to hear the gospel. So I went to a, a, a refugee camp up in the mountains, about 1,500 feet high, up, up high. And uh, I got to preach in the camp before they kicked me, they kicked me out. And uh, I preached for two or three days, off and on, uh, different, different times. And people got saved, and then I started uh, a church up there, a ministry up there, the Africans. And so I'm thankful for the people that come to Christ. So just be, be, be praying for souls. Uh, God wants all men to be saved, to come to the knowledge of the truth. And that's, I used to be zealous for everything wrong. Now I'm zealous for, the, for, for something that's worth, worth telling people about. And things I used to think were important aren't that, impo aren't that important anymore. So God is gracious. And I, 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 was, I was thinking about tonight, tonight's the end of the year. And traditionally we have like a, well, Churches have watch night services. They pray in the new year. I remember I did that once or twice. It happened to be that time of year. And um, I thought, what is the scripture that would talk about praying? And uh, I, I, I immediately thought about Matthew 26. So turn to Matthew 26. Matthew 26. And I'm just going to read a few verses there about special time when the Lord we had this, the songs we, the deeper the song the first song we sang yeah, a couple of songs we sang talk about the garden the garden of Gethsemane the garden of Gethsemane was a a place where Jesus would go to pray um, I love to pray outdoors I I love in Italy I, I live I lived surrounded by ol olive trees I had a big olive tree I would go into the olive tree and pray and pray I mean, it's a it's a, a nice place to hang out because uh, the weather is warmer there, and is where I'm going. So pray for me. I'm, I'm going to a colder place. Um, and I found that this time in, in the Garden of Gethsemane is, is it was a special time where Jesus wanted to tell the disciples what they should do, and they didn't uh, they didn't quite get it for various reasons. I mean, I'm not condemning any of them because we all have our the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak sometimes. And Matthew chapter 26, verse 36, after uh, Jesus has uh, come to the garden, 
he cometh uh, Jesus with them into a place called Gethsemane and saith unto the disciples sit ye here while I go and pray yonder and he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy then saith he unto them my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death tear ye here and watch with me and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying O my father if it be possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not as I will but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto his disciples, and findeth them asleep. And he saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? What? And then he says, Watch and pray, that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time, and prayed, saying, O my father, if, it, if this cup may, may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he, fell, he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep, now, sleep on now and take, take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, and let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. Okay, let's bow our heads and pray. Father, thank you for the time that you've given us to sh share the Word of God. Look to your scriptures, which are inspired by the Holy Spirit, for our um, instruction, for our remembrance of what Jesus Christ went through, for our sins, for our iniquities, for our uh, our are being lost sheep. God, we are, all we like sheep have gone, have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. But you laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. He didn't let the cup pass from him. He, he drank that cup of bitterness. And we pray, Father, that you might uh, help us to learn what it means to pray, to watch for one hour. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. When I, fir I first got saved, um, I they had to talk about prayer. I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't pray a lot. I, I didn't think it was. I didn't spend a lot of time praying. And finally, I found a little track that says seven seven minutes with God. Seven minutes. I said that sounds good. Seven minutes. And so I took this. So I started praying seven minutes. And then I went to Bible school, and then they had me read a book called Twenty Nine Fifty Nine, Twenty Nine Minutes and Fifty Nine Seconds, like thirty minutes basically. And then there they had prayer lists, and they had uh, items of prayer, and just things to talk, just. A, 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 it was a Bible class on prayer. So I started doing and, and we were required every day, every day from 7, 645, 645 to 715 to be sitting down in one place Monday through Friday, not Saturday and Sunday, Monday through Friday in one place and do your devotions, your, your, your read the Bible, pray. So I was getting that pattern of just spending time with the Lord. Then I came across a book. Uh, it's called The Hour that changes the world. And I read the book, and I heard that there's a, even a Bible school up north, they use that uh, book, which has a, a pattern of prayer, and they make, they have their students once a week, sa every Saturday morning. Like, see, we didn't have that devotion time on Saturday morning, but, you know, they expect you to do it on your own. <laughs> and these students are up this Bible school for three hours, they have to pray, three hours. So that's more than one hour. But it was, a, a, it suggests 12, 12 areas a prayer, what you can pray for. One, the first one they talk about is praise. The second one is uh, waiting, and uh, third one would be confession. The fourth one would be scripture praying. Like even the model prayer, my, uh, even our Father which art in heaven, that's just a model prayer. But there's prayers, a lot of prayers in the Bible that you can pray them. Uh, they're written out the, the prayers in the scriptures. And then after scripture praying, they, they talk about watching, and that's what I talked to you about. Now, is watching. Uh, the other areas, I'll just mention them briefly, are, uh, what was it, uh, watching, intercession, petitions, things, specific things, thanksgiving, singing, meditation, listening, praises, 
So in the text, it happened uh, that the verse, look at verse 40, look at verse 40, it happened that the disciples were fallen, they, what happened, they fell asleep. Jesus, uh, verse 40, and he cometh unto them, the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, Peter, what could ye not watch with me one hour? So I want to talk about just watching for one hour. I mean, it's, it seems like a long time, but if you spend time with God in the beginning uh, for five minutes, then move it to ten, and you, you could increase it daily, maybe, and it'll help you to get there. But Jesus commanded him, he said, watch. He said, he said, and before that, he said, uh, sit you here and watch with me. So we have to watch with the Lord. And I know that it's not just the, the, the Apostle Paul also said that in uh, uh, he said in Colossians, continue in prayer and watch with thanksgiving. So watching is as important as giving thanks, which is very important. And the word, I, I was, I'm not a Greek scholar, but the word in Greek is Gregorie. So it's like the shepherds were watching the sheep to watch over things. And you're, you're, being, you're watching what's going on. And th this means being vigilant. The dictionary talks about a special time of, gu of, of guarding uh, something and being alert. Uh, Charlie used to work security, right? I used to, I used to work security from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock in the morning. I had to walk around the campus as a security guard. And you know, I had to watch out for the deer getting too, too rambunctious. I was up in the woods. Um, so that, it, was, it was a good time. I enjoyed you know, up in the middle of the night. You know, look at the stars and you just pray a little bit and you watch the, the sky. And you, watch the, you open the doors, make sure they're locked when you leave. So when Jesus and Paul used the expression, uh, they meant that believers should uh, be awake spiritually. A lot of times we, we get dull, we, we, we tend to think about other things. But they always link up prayer with uh, watching. And I want to encourage you that watching is not something that comes automatically. In fact, it's easy for me to, to praise God. It's easy for me to uh, confess my sins. It's easy for me to uh, just wait. Sit there and wait. Just sit, sit still and wait. Maybe the Lord will come back and I don't have to <laughs> we can leave. But you know, watching in prayer should be something that will help you to discern what's going on in the world around you. Satan is very active. The wiles of Satan are evident. The Bible talks about that. Uh, he's a minister of light. He's a, he's a, a, the, the apostle Peter said that um, Satan is, is a, wants to devour you. He's a roaring lion that wants to devour uh, Christians. So the, the word um, watch, uh, which he used, is that word, Gregorio, in, when Peter said uh, that you should be, 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 be vigilant because the Satan is a, a roaring lion. And uh, the, the Apostle Paul talked about the full armor of God. In, in, in the full armor of God, of course, it has lots of parts, but the one part, the last verse in that section there, verse 18 of chapter 6, says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance. So, with and supplication for all saints. So, I started, I, I, start, I studied this out and I started thinking, well, I should, I see somebody, I think about something, I should pray for them more often, watch what's going on in their lives, be, a, be vigilant, about what, your pastor watches for your souls, you should watch out for each other. It's a family, uh, a family affair, a family affair where we pray and watch, watch for each other. And to pray correctly, uh, we must uh, be mentally alert and not dull and drowsy. So obviously, these disciples, I mean, it was, I don't know, they had a long day. They were uh, going through a lot of uh, uh, tiredness, and they were just tired. They, were, they fell asleep. And it happens to me. I'm sometimes on my knees praying, and the next thing you know, half an hour later, I wake up, and my knees are numb, and I'm, <laughs> I'm just tired. Because it can happen. You can be tired when you're praying. But so it means that you, you need to be like a, watch, a watchman, you know, in the Bible, in ancient times, they had um, uh, watchmen that stood on the walls of the city and would warn the inhabitants of the enemy that's coming. And believe me, the enemy uh, does attack uh, God's people. And he says in Isaiah, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace, day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. So the watchmen... Uh, were warning the people of enemies, and also it was a in anticipation of that God would prepare them to um, uh, have their city 
guarded from the enemies of, uh, of uh, and, and eventually when they, they were destroyed, the, the watchman would tell them, you're going to go back to your city. So that the watchmen were always telling them what's going on with the, their lives and we have to be praying and watching for each other. And I know that uh, it's a spirit of prayer that takes this to a higher level, uh, not just a, a re repeating something uh, in a mechanical way. So we need to be, we have this spirit of watchfulness. Uh, Satan wants to stop us from praying. I know that some, I, start, I start to pray and I start thinking about what do I have to do this morning? What I'm, what's going to, where I have to go to meetings? Well, then you can start praying for those meetings maybe. But, you know, it can be easy to be distracted from prayer, uh, especially if it's not early in the morning where there's noise and activities going on. And sometimes we don't, we don't have, our prayer may lack purpose. I mean, what am I praying about? And I'm not really that interested in what I'm praying about. And that can distract you from doing what's right. So we should also seek to be aware that Satan uh, has uh, activities in the world that are going against uh, God's plan for this world. And I see that. I lived in Italy for 17 years. And I see the spiritual uh, idolatry, the spiritual ignorance, the spiritual indifference, and the spiritual uh, oppression over the hearts of men. And even here in the United States, it's true. Where the, the enemy is going against God's plan of reaching the lost, reaching the unsaved. And how much awareness do I have of what's going on in different places? You should first of all be aware of what's going on in Fort Lauderdale, Broward County, uh, Miami Beach. You had Marathon you worked with a lot. And so these are specific needs that you can find to, to be watching uh, while you pray and be interceding for specific things. And I, I read prayer letters a lot. I read uh, journals. Uh, but, you know, sometimes politics can, uh, can need prayer. I mean, obviously, the, the presidential situation, elections, uh, local elections, whatever is going on, we have to pray for those things. Even weather conditions, weather conditions. We just came from Puerto Rico. We went through, we came from Italy on a boat, stopped off in Puerto Rico, went to a church. The roof, the roof was taken off. There's no roof in the church, so we had to meet in a basement. And it made me, I, when I was in Italy, I heard about the hurricane. I said, oh, no, these people are not going to have fun. They're going to be... In the middle of trouble, so I prayed for the. I didn't. I, didn't, I prayed for them, and then I saw what happened. So we have uh, uh, fires in California, whatever. There's always earthquakes, and uh, I had a friend that was in Cambodia, a missionary, a doctor. He decided to go to Sri Lanka to bring medicine because there was a big tsunami. I don't know, ten years ago, uh, the tsunami that hit the, the Far East, and he went there, and he was attacked by Muslims. They, 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 they cornered them in their van, in their, in their truck, and they broke, broke in there a little bit. They, they tried to kill them even, but they got out. We, I prayed for them. It was a tough time. He was there in a, in a Muslim section of uh, Sri Lanka. So God uh, helped him. So there's, there's a, opportunities to pray, uh, watching and praying. You have to have information about this. Be, be thinking about what's going on. But God can keep you aware of what's going on in the world around you, and you should be aware of what's going on in your, in your home, in your family, and be attentive. I, I was trying to think of a miracle, a miracle in prayer. Well, the biggest miracle is that you get saved. So I see people get saved, and one guy, his name was Miracle recently, and that was a blessing. Uh, he's a Nigerian named Miracle. And then I said, well, let me think of some miracles of, of God answering prayer. And I, I found, uh, I talked to Scott Dewey when I was coming up here. He said, yeah, uh, have you ever prayed all night? I prayed once all night. Didn't do it, didn't do it very often, but uh, he, he said there was an all-night prayer watch in uh, England, in Great Britain, during the Battle of Britain, when the, the Germans were, the Luftwaffe, Luftwaffe was flying over Britain. And the orphans, I don't know the name, I can't remember that he mentioned an orphanage. The orphans and their leader prayed and interceded for, for these people. And so that helped uh, the Germans, to, didn't succeed there, but there's even one greater one, King George, I, I read this, King George had the whole country, the whole country of England had a National Day of Prayer. In 1940, 300, over 300,000 soldiers were in Dunkirk, and they were stuck. They couldn't get out. The Germans had just attacked Belgium. The Germans were coming across, and they knew it was bad. Winston Churchill uh, and the king and everybody was said, let's pray. And they prayed, and a miracle happened. The weather changed, and then the Hitler, for some reason, decided to stop them from going forward. And that was just the amount of time that they needed. They escaped. They were rescued from Dunkirk, and they got to England. 330,000 uh, soldiers, some of whom came back and finally liberated um, the, um, the, uh, 
Belgium and France, and they fought the war there. So you can see how God answered prayers. It was a whole country of prayer, not just a, uh, a few men. In fact, uh, Jehoshaphat had a battle to fight, and he couldn't. He was against strong odds in Second Chronicles, and he had his people just sing praises. They sang praises, and then God defeated the enemy. So we have a, a lot of ways to see God work, and as there is a spiritual warfare there, but most important, I think is that you need to ask God to use the Holy Spirit to use you in prayer. Uh, I can sometimes have a list of things and say, I'll pray for this, pray for that. It's just something I just pray through uh, rapidly. But the Holy Spirit will make intercession. In fact, uh, I'm just going to read one, se one section here in, in, in Romans chapter 8, verse 26. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for, as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So the Holy Spirit guides you to have an effective prayer life. And if you haven't tried it, that's what God wants us to do. Uh, twice in Scripture, the Scriptures, the Bible says to pray in the Spirit in Jude and back in Ephesians, where I mentioned before. Uh, there was a preacher, I think his name was Layman Strauss. He was asked uh, uh, about praying, and he said, if, I were, if anyone were to ask me what is the first truly great secret of prayer, he said, is a successful prayer life, I would say an answer is praying in the Holy Spirit. And then he added, human wisdom and human desire can achieve human results. But praying in the Spirit produces divine results. And you have, if you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, if you're born again, if you receive the Holy Spirit by, by God's grace, if you've been saved by grace from your sin and your condemnation and you come into new, uh, new life. I, mean, I used to pray, before I became a Christian, I saw people praying for money. I saw people praying. I used to have these big means for praying for money. People pray for things all the time. Uh, people are praying and saying, Oh, God, help me for this. Oh, God, help me for that. But this is not just a... Uh, a pagan prayer or a, or a non-relationship prayer, not having a relationship with Jesus Christ prayer. It's a prayer which can have great results. Uh, I, I can see God using that in, in, in my life. Uh, I get up, I got up this morning at 3, 3.30, 4 o'clock. I said, why am I awake? You know, People were praying for me in Italy, I think. So, so it's just it's kind of it moved my, my body to get, get out of bed for a while. And it's easy to fall into a form of prayer sometimes, though. Uh, people sometimes pray, uh, like uh, before they pray, Oh Lord, bless so-and-so, bless so-and-so. And that's kind of just general. You should pray specifically, though. Um, and I would say not just for things that you can see, but things that you can't see. Because the, the things which are seen are temporal, but the things that are unseen are eternal. So there is the souls of men are in, a, in the valley of uh, decision, and they need to be prayed for. Uh, a prayer warrior is aware spiritually of what's going on in the lives of people that they want to pray for. You, you care about people, you love people, and you pray for them. So we have to do that, otherwise the, we'll, we'll miss the blessing of praying. And I uh, read one place that said in this book I had at Bible College, you should pray retail and not wholesale. Because if you pray wholesale, okay, Lord bless all the missionaries in Africa, Lord bless all the pastors in Florida, Lord bless all the people in my church, and Lord uh, bless the the government, but no, you pray specifically. You say pray for them and their their health, their finances, their their family relationships, domestic situations, or sometimes there's domestic crises that need to be, be prayed about. So not just uh, general prayers. And one of the best prayers, I mean, this is not the watching prayer, but in Colossians, why don't you turn to turn to Colossians? I'll, I'll give you uh, a prayer. I want you to pray for the church, for each other. This is a prayer that Paul prayed for the church at Colossae, which he started. Um, in, his, in his journeys in Asia Minor. And uh, when he prayed this prayer, it's something that really, it's not just, Lord, bless so-and-so, uh, it's, Lord, do this for my, my brother or sister, my friends in Christ. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, and I'm going to read verse uh, 9 through... 12 probably. Verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease 
to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to His glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of inheritance in, of the saints in light. And then it goes on about how He delivered us. So have you prayed for someone specifically? This is a good prayer to pray for each other, for your friends, for your, your pastor, your brothers, your sisters here tonight, during the, during the, during the whole year, I mean, all the time. And just, it's a good prayer just to have in your, uh, this is scripture praying, and I would in, in, in recommend it because it gives you a, exactly what God wants us to pray for, the spiritual condition of each other. And I'm thankful for what God's done uh, in my life as people prayed for me, and what God does in, in uh, lives of others that we pray for. So what, could you not watch with me one hour? So take one hour, there's a song which uh, we didn't sing, but it's a sweet hour of prayer. Mm -hmm. So take an hour and pray with God. It could, could be tonight, perhaps, as you pray, or whenever God gives you opportunity to take that time to watch and pray. Okay, let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, uh, thank you, Father. <coughs> Lord, I know that your word is uh, clear that we have to uh, pray without ceasing, but we also have to have seasons of prayer uh, where we can spend some time uh, with you alone uh, in a secret place under the shadow of the Almighty that we might have the understanding of the shadows of life, the, the realities of life, what's going on around us, so we can be a watchman uh, in prayer, watching and praying, that we might be able to uh, see the enemy thwarted, his designs thwarted, his uh, schemes uh, uh, unmasked. And I pray for each person here tonight that knows you, that they might use your uh, uh, challenge to pray, to watch and pray as a, as a, as a new uh, way to grow. And, and we all have to grow. I have to grow. We have to grow in, in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. But also uh, in that m most important area of prayer that we uh, fail to do sometimes. Thank you for those that uh, have come here tonight. If there's anyone here that doesn't know you, that hasn't got that new life, that they might see this as a, the day to start a new life, a new year with a new life. We ask this in Jesus' name.